What is up everybody? It is Wick here and I've got some bolos to show you today. It's been a while since I've made one of these videos. If you enjoy these types of videos, make sure to hit that like button for me right now and subscribe and I will keep making them. Still renovating the room behind me, so almost got the walls done at least. Looking forward to getting that done. But in this video, I'm going to talk about things you can look for out in the wild, places like garage sales and thrift stores. These things are easy to miss and uh, they have some surprising value, can make you a lot of money. Every time I make one of these videos, a lot of people within the week are messaging me saying, thank you, I watched this video and I found some stuff at the thrift store that you mentioned in it, made a lot of money. It's, it's kind of cool, but I got some great things to show you. Let's just jump into it. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about are the cell phone signal boosters. And uh, I have these on this list today because, well, they're actually kind of missable. A lot of people see these and they think they're just old modems, maybe a router or something that's just not worth a whole lot, but some of these are worth a fortune or a small fortune <laughs> at least. I picked up one recently at a Goodwill. I think I paid three or four, maybe five dollars for it and I sold it for a hundred bucks. Sold very quickly, but there's some really good ones and if you look at some of these, oh, you're getting close to a thousand dollars for them. Uh, the Wii Boost, and basically what these are, like if you're in a location where you don't get a good cell signal, it just amplifies that and uh, makes it easier to get cell phone access. So a lot of businesses will use these also, like if they're in a big building, so that always drives the price up. But uh, we got some mixed new here and pre-owned. You can see some of these are just around $500, $600. Look at this home cell signal booster. A lot of people would just see this box inside of a thrift store and say, well, that's just a router, let's just move on. Some routers are worth picking up, of course, but a lot of these cell phone signal boosters, I think, look like the old models that really don't have a lot of value, which is kind of odd. So it's worth paying attention to different looking modems. Uh, some of these, though, I think have big antennas that come with them, so it'd probably be hard to miss. Uh, a lot of them just kind of smaller systems, like this WeBoost one. It looks like WeBoost makes a lot of them. And I would imagine if you're an Amazon seller and you found some of these pre-owned, you'd probably be able to sell them on there as well if you wasn't restricted and get even more. I know the one I sold was selling on Amazon for about $300. I just, it was a restricted brand, so I, I couldn't sell it myself. So I sold it on eBay and it sold very quickly. So you can see I've been scrolling now for a bit. Uh, still in the $400 range, open box 400 with like, what was that, 60 bids I saw. And they go all the way down into the hundreds, but you know, who's gonna complain if you even found one that was $5 and you was able to sell it for $100, right? Just a cool item to look out for, I think. Here's another cool item to look out for. Uh, I really wanna find one of these. I, I love these Saturn lamps. And this is kind of a more obvious one. If you saw this out of the thrift store at a garage sale, you'd probably say that's something a bit special. These 1930s, mid-century modern type art deco things, um, just really cool. If I found one, I would probably put it downstairs because uh, <laughs> I really like them. Especially that orange one that sold for eight ninety. You know, I found the Fantasia lamp uh, a few years ago. I still got that. I'm considering selling it just because it's so big and it takes up so much space. But I've just had it downstairs. I had it upstairs here in the room for a while. So I don't know what I'll end up doing with that. But anytime I find lamps or uh, certain objects like the Emerson fan that I found from the, the 30s, I kind of want to hold on to it if it's in nice condition and invaluable so that's my curse anyway if i was to find one of these you also got it looks like some saturn probably for a saturn car some lights mixed in here with the ebay search you see there's quite a few different models of these saturn lamps and of course the price is just going to be great if they're in good condition and working uh just a cool item i wanted to throw on here just if nothing else to talk about and uh, look at them. Lots of Saturn parts. Look at that one, an iridescent Lundberg one. Um, I've never seen one like that before, but would love to find one. There's a Fantasia lamp. <laughs> actually right there, fiber optic one. That's a really cool looking one too. Uh, space age, chrome, all that kind of stuff, um, you know, from the 30s, 40s. Uh, UFO saucer lamp, very cool as well. I just love this kind of stuff. Here's a Schlitz beer spinning globe also really cool but yeah look out for him so i've been picking up a lot of the swoops helicopter from this blaze and the monster machines and uh i don't know i sold three or four of them this past year they never have the vehicles with them and these vehicles are very common looking they're very kind of generic in my opinion looking and uh, you see the big bags at thrift stores or toys or goodwill will have the bags with the toys mixed in it's good to, to learn what these look like and this is mostly for me i want to 
There's a Swoops helicopter that sold new for $147. But I want to le learn more what these look like. And, and it's probably going to be hard to see in my video. But you can just do a search on eBay and kind of look at the pictures to get an idea. You know, a, a good lot of these will make you some decent money. And even just finding a few here or there, there's one that looks like new around $100 or $90 is one without best offer. Uh, die cast, you can kind of tell because they have faces on them. And now that I've found the swoops helicopter, it's just like, come on, I want to find uh, some of these small ones. But I look in the bags, I just see so many different cars. There's so many different cars with faces and eyeballs and stuff that look similar to these. So I'm going to spend some time just kind of looking at the pictures, kind of get a good idea of what these look like. There's another one that sold new for 65. See, there's a swoops helicopter right there, uh, 6156 has some cars actually it seems kind of low because I usually sell the swoops helicopter the last one I sold I sold for $35 plus shipping the others I sold for $29.99 I figured I'd try $35 <laughs> and then one did sell for $35 plus shipping so there's a nice picture of one you can just kind of get an idea. Um, they're not huge money. Not every bolo has to be worth thousands. Uh, but these kind of things, if you're picking them up multiple times over the year, can make you some great profit. This may be something that a lot of people recognize as being valuable. These V-Stacks, uh, turntables, mixers, stuff like that. DJs use them. Uh, I threw this in the video because I recently found a V-Stacks item at Goodwill. And I knew the brand. It just didn't click right away. I'm like, V-Stacks, this looks cheap. And then I thought, wait a minute, V-Stacks, that's a high-end item. I don't think the video's out yet, but that'll be coming up. So make sure you're subscribed. You won't want to miss that one. But uh, yeah, some of these mixers, DJ equipment, of course, can get over $1,000. But there's some lower end V stack stuff as well that you can still get, you know, anywhere from 80 to, to $200 for. And obviously if you come across any DJ mixer type thing like this, um, electronic, it's worth looking up the model and doing research, right? I don't need to make a video like this to tell you that. But the point is to just learn the V-Stacks name because it can be little parts, uh, little record players. You can see we're still in the, like the, the $400, $500 range, but you can just keep scrolling real fast. And even you know down here, <laughs> there's all kinds of different things. Like there's a little mixer. Here's a little crossfader for a V-Stacks. Um, just all kinds of things like this. Here's a little USB portable turntable for $180. It's just a great brand to look out for. I think it's mostly in Japan. So you see a lot of like Japanese comps or maybe it's the UK. I don't remember exactly where these come from, but it doesn't matter. They're worth money. I believe my last Bolo video I made was board game featured. Tons of awesome board games you can look out for to make money. I forgot to put one of the best ones in there. And this is something I've been looking for for years. So I figured I'd throw it in this one. And that's the Dark Tower Milton Bradley board game. This thing is worth a lot of money. It's on my bucket list of things to find for sure. You see one here sold for $900 pre-owned. I got $600, $549. I think the, the average price if you have one of these working and complete is going to be over $500. Uh, just an amazing board game. And I'm fascinated by the board games that you can find out there that are actually worth money. This one's kind of a un unique one, so it might stand out at a garage sale or something, but still, it's one of the uh, holy grail board games, if you will. <laughs> Um, just very desirable, lots of comps, kind of like the Tornado Rex I was talking about, which I have one actually listed, have it listed for like 350 so that's another great one, but there's just, there's a lot of board games that have been made over the years, uh, a lot of them not worth anything, but some of them like this Dark Tower for whatever reason, I don't know if it's based on uh, Stephen King's Dark Tower series or not, Honestly, I don't think so. I mean, I don't see Stephen King's name anywhere here. And I've been scrolling for a while. <laughs> We're still like over $400. A phenomenal game to look out for. I mentioned these in some of my reselling videos, my haul videos of thrifting. I bought them. And uh, that's the first act guitars, like the kids' guitars. A lot of these actually have pretty good value. People write them off because um, they're not, you know, for adults really, even though they're actual guitars, you can learn to play with them. But a lot of these will sell for over a hundred dollars, especially the electric ones here. You can see uh, some of the prices, 174, 189 plus shipping. Some of these people though are, are charging way too much, you know, to ship something like this. But you get the idea when it comes to first act and there's some other things like some amps and I think some drum sets too that are pretty decent. A lot of the acoustic guitars aren't great, but you, if you're getting them cheap enough, I think I got one at a rummage sale this past year for a dollar. 
you know, it was worth like 20 or $25. So when you're paying that little for them, uh, people will still buy them. I've sold a couple electric guitars this year from First Act, but you see they're not huge money. You're not going to get rich off of them, but I do think a lot of people just see these and they're like, oh, that's, that's nothing. Not worth my time, but uh, if you're getting them cheap enough, they are. So I've talked about these Jinko jeans before on my channel. Uh, I don't think I've ever had them in one of these Bolo videos, but I, I did find some sweatshirts this past year at a garage sale. And I talked to the guy and I'm like, do you have any jeans? And he said, yes, but I'm not selling them. I don't know. I don't think they knew you know, what they were worth or they probably wouldn't have sold the sweatshirts to me um, for, <laughs> I think I paid a dollar a piece for them. And there's a couple in there that was worth well over a hundred dollars, but Jinko jeans. And it seems like the price of these are going up because I've been looking for them for years and I was trying to think of some things for this video and I'm like oh yeah I've been I've been looking through jeans every time I go to the thrift store just hoping to find a pair and I'm like I need to put these in a, in a video and talk about them when I looked them up I'm like wow some of these are selling over ten thousand dollars what there's also the shorts Jinko shorts and you can tell they have kind of just random weird designs on them. Uh, these are from the late 90s, like early 2000s. They have a very big following, obviously. I don't think there was a lot made. I remember having a pair of these. Um, they're because I liked baggy jeans <laughs> when I was a teenager. They're kind of considered skater jeans. I wasn't a skater or anything. I remember having a pair. I, I wish I still did, obviously. But you see a lot of these jeans. Like here's one with the uh, the crown, which is kind of a staple. Uh, $810. Uh, I think one of the sweatshirts I bought had a crown on it. Haven't even got those listed yet. <laughs> uh, I need to get, I need to get those listed, but yeah, any of the Jinko sweatshirts, jeans or shorts, but I was just kind of shocked about the prices of these. So I wanted to, to bring them up again. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not sure if I put them in a, another video. If, if I have, it's been a long time ago. It's hard to remember what I've made videos on at this point. But let me know in the comments if, if anyone's found any Jinko jeans in the, the, the past year or so and what you sold them for. Uh, some of these prices, I remember being worth like 200, maybe $300 a lot of them, but now I'm just seeing, you know, the pair for over $10,000. Of course, I have to mention some of these comps um, for the, the extreme high ones might not be accurate. They might be, you know, fake listings or something, who knows, but you can see when there's tons of listings, especially with bids that are over $500, you know that these jeans are something to look out for. They got the wide legs. Every time I look at jeans, I always look at the legs first. I'm like flipping through and I'm just <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of them, they don't have that wide of, of legs. They're just kind of big and baggy and they have these weird designs on them. So I can't wait till I find a pair. It's going to happen one day. I've also been trying to look for more decent blankets in my quest to find more valuable blankets. You know, obviously Pendleton, a great brand. They make a lot of wool clothing but they also make blankets and some of them are kind of unique, rare type blankets like this Grateful Dead Pendleton blanket. It looks like it sold for over $3,000, uh, one of 250. That's kind of real holy grail stuff, right? A lot of people aren't going to see this in their lifetime, but there's other basic, more common, especially the vintage Pendleton wool blankets that have value. Uh, if we look at some of them here, I mean, there's a poncho for $1,200, you know, like, like I said, some of these ponchos and clothing and coats, Pendleton, wool ones will, will sell great. It seems like every time I find a Pendleton, it has a hole in it, which a lot of wool things will get holes in them. Uh, but still, uh, they hold value even, you know, with damage like that. There's another Grateful Dead one, early 1900s, um, $860, just different designs. And, you know, if you've touched wool things before, it's pretty easy to pick out a wool blanket and what it would be worth. They usually have these kind of Native American Aztec looking designs on a lot of them. There's a, a Star Wars one, <laughs> um, it says of 1977 limited edition. I don't know if it came out in 1977, but boy, I, I would have a hard time selling that one if I actually found it. One with the ducks, that's fairly common one. I've only found one of these in my life and I found one at a garage sale and it was priced like $150. So it wasn't, you know, something I could buy really or wanted to buy, though I probably should have researched it. I don't remember much about it. It still could have been profitable, you know, if it was a $400 dollar one. Yeah, I'd, I would pay 150. This was years ago. I, I was not willing to pay when I first started reselling $150 for a blanket. <laughs> um, that just wasn't me back then. You know, now I'll spend, you know, it doesn't matter the cost of something. I'll spend 
$10,000 if I can make money on it, right? And there's lots of wool blankets, so I might as well mention the Hudson's Bay wool blanket just because it's very easy to spot. At least most of them, they got these stripes on there, like rainbow stripes. And you can see, you know, they also sell for, you know, $300, $500. So very easy to pick out if you see these colors. Uh, usually, if I'm at a garage sale, and there's a bunch of blankets or something. I just kind of look real quick to see if I notice any of the wool. Uh, if I notice any like vintage, you know, like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or something like that. Blankets can be worth something. So uh, that's kind of what I'm looking for. But I love blankets and stuff like this. That it's, it's easy to spot like this one right here. Because uh, it makes it easy. Especially if you're at a rummage cell and you see a bunch of you know, blankets or something. And it's like, oh, I know what that is. Let me grab that real quick. So something I've been looking at in the past month or two, which I've always kind of paid attention to are leather belts and I know someone mentioned in the comments recently that I should be looking at leather belts and I do I, I try to find leather belts I've sold them in the past the thing with this area and the Goodwills in this area is you don't see actually pre-owned belts very often it's very strange Goodwill wholesales in like belts from China and sells new for like ten dollars or something so that's what you see everywhere at Goodwill, and I don't know if they're purposely pulling used belts because they want people to buy the wholesale ones. Uh, maybe they're sending them to the bins, or I wouldn't put it past Goodwill to be throwing them away, honestly, because I've found out some of the stuff that Goodwill throws away rather than try to sell, and it's, it's just sickening. So I have to rely on thrift stores, and a lot of people, well, buy belts very quickly at these thrift stores. I've sold a lot of belt buckles as well. I just don't see them very often. And, you know, we got some high-end stuff here, right? We're not talking about Gucci belts. Obviously, if you find one of those, these rare, like, ostrich skin and alligator skin, all that kind of stuff, but still just solid leather belts that have some character. You can still buy and sell for $30, $50. So I've been looking for them. I'm just not finding any. <laughs> it's kind of like the ties. You do see a lot of used ties around here, but you just get tired of, of looking for them because... Most of the ties are generic, though if they do put out a leather belt, it is easier to find because there's just not that many around here for me, but it is something that's just kind of a, a great bread and butter type item to find at thrift stores and probably have to rely on garage sales and rummage sales for those. Admittedly, I, I don't look for them at rummage sales. Um, <laughs> or maybe I just don't notice them, but this year, I think, you know, after I look at the other stuff, I'll start looking up some belts. Next is something that I've actually found before. And that's these scrubbing bubbles, automatic shower cleaner. Found one recently at a Goodwill. It was brand new in box. Had some extra refills with it, but pretty good money for something like this. You would not think this is valuable. They sell great pre-owned also. And it's just this thing you hang on the, the shower head and I guess it automatically cleans your shower somehow. I don't know how it works. Uh, the automatic refill cleaner also sells you know, great because I guess people need that. It's just one of those discontinued products that uh, people liked and they, they're still looking for them. Here's something else I didn't really notice. These flushable refills it looks like a box of 12 sold for $104. But yeah, some of this discontinued scrubbing bubble stuff is good, especially the automatic shower cleaner. If you see one out, even pre-owned, check it out because you can make some money on it. Here is something for all the people who want to sell locally on Facebook or Craigslist. That's this boho kind of tropical wicker furniture and items. A lot of this vintage stuff has went up in value. Sometimes, you know, you're gonna get more money based on the name or the maker of this stuff, but a lot of times it can just be very basic stuff. Uh, people will still buy it. Like these chairs right here. I swear I've seen these chairs before at a rummage sale, right? Or stuff like it. And you look at it and you just walk past it, but it can be valuable. People are looking for this kind of stuff like the nightstand dresser. I mean, some of those pe people have priced 350 for shipping. I would never want to ship anything like this, to be honest. But you can still sell it locally and make some money. There's like little desk. There's these room dividers that are wicker. Uh, coffee table, 280. Here's a stroller for 250. Different chairs. A trunk, 395. Some of this stuff is just very valuable. It has the glass tops. I remember a lot of it too. I know my sister actually had a, a chair, like a big chair, almost identical to this one right here, actually. Now, this one says child size, so I don't know if it's the same one, but I remember it being pretty big. But then again, I was a, a kid, <laughs> so who knows? There's a laundry basket, just all kinds of unique things. Uh, the elephant plant stand. It's just a style to keep an eye out for. I don't really like to sell locally on Facebook, to be honest, and deal with this kind of big stuff, but there's a lot of people who will. I'm sure most of the time you're going to get this stuff cheap, so... 
wanted to throw it in there let me know if you've ever found or sold any of this kind of wicker stuff before but there it is everybody that's what i have to show you today hopefully you learned something don't forget to hit that like button for me on the way out it really does help the video and i appreciate you watching also make sure you are subscribed youtube will stop showing you my videos if you are not and let me know in the comments of what you're finding out there i love to hear all the cool stuff people have discovered i love the hunt that's one of my favorite things about reselling of course i love the money too i'm not gonna lie but the hunt is it's just thrilling to go out and look for this kind of stuff and find it at a good price flip it make some money you can find me on twitter instagram and tiktok flipping underscore junk and this has been wick until next time